Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture Spell to Rushing, and we're going to be talking about gardening the next little while. And, uh, Jay, I, you know, you're in, you know, poor old Java sitting at home with a sick child, so it's going to be you and me, buckaroo. That's right. Anyway. That's right. I'm an I'm a ensemble cast of one here at the radio. That's okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll bundle. We'll have a good time. And, uh, matter of fact, Folks, if you want to give us a call, it is toll free one eight seven seven MPB ring. In a little while, we're going to be talking with a a lonely and bored garden center manager. Uh, but before we get into all that, let's just do what we're here for, and that's yak with gardeners. We're going to start out in Jackson talking with George. Hey, George, good morning. Oh no, <laughs> that's okay. that's okay. there you go. Give us a call back, George. You know, a lot of times you when know, we're listening to news and stuff, you know, sometimes I actually push wrong buttons, and I'm five thousand miles away which by the way uh, Jay, i'm gonna be back in the studio in a couple of weeks so woo-hoo. all right it, w- it will be good to have you back here in the studio for sure uh, i'm looking forward to uh what is it uh 104 degree uh, uh air temperature or whatever right now yeah that's nice isn't it <laughs> yeah well it's six you got up to 65 around today but uh that's okay um I, i've been in touch with a lot of folks in jackson i've had a real good friend of mine named uh, Jesse Yancey, who's a gorilla gardener in Jackson, wrote about him in my, my new book called Maverick Gardeners. He went over to my garden and took a look around, sent me some pictures, and uh, looks like we've had enough rain to where, unless things have been overdone, uh, then it looks pretty good. Now, my hostas and ferns that I planted this past spring, they're still alive without being watered. Uh, my lantana and other butterfly perennials, they're in full bloom. And my truck garden is still kicking, which is basically just a big pot, a big box of potting soil on the back of a pickup truck. And I noticed that my zinnias and periwinkle and angelonia and tomatoes and peppers and okra are all doing okay. So um, everything's going to be ready for me, including some of the weeds I saw in some of the pictures he took. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh well, man. Right. Yeah. Peppers yeah. and okra sounds great to me. Hey, we've got George back on the line with us. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Hey, George. Good morning, sir. Howdy. Good morning, Felda. Got a question. Well, yes. Got sir. a beautiful cypress tree, actually a big one and a small one in my backyard, which is pretty big. Uh-huh. Uh huh. and it's about twice as tall as the telephone pole, and it's beautiful, and it's a position where if it did fall, it probably crush our house pretty good yeah. but uh it looks very healthy to me who would i call to find out if this is a healthy tree and if it's in danger of falling well you know there's you can call anybody who's a licensed arborist you know and when, when i mean licensed they can show you their license which, which means they've got training and and all like that uh, i do that a pretty good bit in in the jackson area so if you can wait a couple of weeks and i'm I, i'm back in town you know you can shoot me an email uh, I do that quite a bit, but the bottom line is here's what I would look for. Uh, first of all, I would walk around the trunk, and as long as it's pretty solid all the way around, no big, obviously rotten holes in it, then I'd walk across the street and look at it and look at the silhouette of the tree, uh, George, the part that's way up high in the sky. And uh, because trees are always going to have dead and dying lower and older limbs. That's just normal even out in the woods, but as long as the silhouette of the tree up high looks pretty good, the tree is in good shape, but if you've got dead branches and limbs and twigs way up high in the tree, that's a symptom of trunk or root problems. Those are the two things I look for, healthy trunk and whether or not it's got leaves on most of the twigs up high in the, uh, the skyline of the tree. Those are the, the things that I look for. And, okay. and I, taught this, I taught this tree surgery course, and that's basically what I look for. Thank you. Uh, that sounds good, and uh, I would like to email you and maybe engage you to come out and take a look, because my wife's right. thinking the other way, and uh, I'll let you stand in between us. Well, I, uh, I'll stand off to one side. Let's put it that way, because <laughs> let's put it this way. I, can, I can't predict where the tree's going to fall or not, but I can tell you the chips are going to fall if, you, if, if I get in between you and your sweetheart. <laughs> I, I anyway, just, you. just ho- holler Thanks. at me a couple of weeks. I'll do that. How do I email you? Uh, well, it's, uh, you can go to my blog, felderrushing.blog. Oh, oh gotcha. B- B- not, yeah, not a website. It says dot .blog, and it has a little thing that says email me. Okay, beautiful. Thank you All so right. much. Have a great day. You, you bet. Appreciate it. All right, and Felder, we've uh, got uh, more calls waiting. Woo, calls are pouring in, Jay. Yes, sir. Let's go to Janet next, who is in Mobile. Hello. Hey, Janet. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Yeah. So far, so good. All right. I've got a question about the name of a plant. Okay. Um, 
I've seen it, you know, in old farms and things like over in Baldwin County. Uh-huh. It, it's about four to six feet tall. It has either red flowers or yellow, yellow flowers, and it blooms and, you know, grows in clumps usually. It looks like a lily to me. Huh. Well, it could be, but, that, you know, that could be so many different kinds. It's not a canna, is it? It could be. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Can, canna is spelled C-A-N-N-A. If you look it up, you know, it's an old-fashioned plant. It's got the leaves uh, get kind of kind of wide, and they come together point almost like like, uh, like paddles for a boat. Right. The cannas, yes. they, you know, they, they grow in clumps. And, you know, they're kind of wide, not like an elephant ear, but but wider than, you know, they're not skinny leaves. And they can have yellow or white, uh, yellow or red or orange flowers. Uh, orange. But, but uh, that's just a guess because there's lots of perennials that can do that. So if there's any way you get a picture, we can sure identify it. Well, I saw one, you know, while I'm riding down the street, so I could get a picture. But where would I buy something like that? Well, let's find out what it is, because it might be that it's so common you can just knock on the door and they'll be glad for you to pick some up. Because if okay. it's canna, people who grow canna are always willing to share because it spreads a little bit, and it's real easy to. So let's try to find out what it is first. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck on it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Whew, there's no way I can answer that. It looks like a lily and it could be yellow or red. Whew. I don't know what that could be. <laughs> too, too many choices there. It's like I saw a car. It's black. It's got four wheels. Wonder, maybe it's a pickup truck. I don't know. <laughs> you know, Jay. Well, you know what I'm saying. If, if, it has, uh, if it has a garden in the back of it, you know specifically hey, what it is then. Hey, let me ask you something on, on, uh, on Fix It. Do, do, do people have questions like that on Fix It where, or, or, or any of the programs where they just get stuck? We had a question this week on Fix It. Uh, interestingly, that you asked because someone called in and said they just bought a new house uh-huh. and their backyard was entirely covered in poison ivy. Oh and boy! They were like, "How do we get rid of this? Like, you can't even step foot into the backyard because it's just yeah. it's it's wall to wall." And we had some some interesting suggestions. From the, the audience, the rest of the show, it's you know it's one of those things in radio. Sometimes you come up with this you know kind of quirky sidebar, and it it becomes the topic <laughs> because it's yeah, so yeah. interesting that people run with it. And that yeah. was kind of the thing with that. Some people suggested uh, uh, renting a goat somehow or another. I didn't know it was goat rental places, but yeah. Well, I, I think they I think they I think they rent goats at Home Depot and Lowe's. I'm right. not sure. <laughs> no, actually, actually, this is a really common frustration because poison ivy is a native plant. It's from here. It was here before we were here, and it grows great, uh, and it spreads like crazy. And the truth is, there's only one really good way to get rid of it, and a lot of people don't want to hear it, but it works, and it's safe, and it's just cut it down best you can, and when the new growth comes out, um, hit it with Roundup. You know, Roundup absolutely kills it, roots and all, and it only kills what you get on the green growth of. So if there's grass and stuff like that, they might want to let it get a little bit taller and just brush the stuff. All you got to do is wet the foliage, and it won't hurt tree trunks. It won't hurt tree roots. It won't give you cancer. But that's the only thing that is effective around other plants that kills things, roots and all, without screwing up the environment. It's the, the least troublesome herbicide you can use and it and it were and i've used it on poison ivy many times i've got no poison ivy me or my neighbors because when they're not looking i go in their yard <laughs> there you go I, I'm, i mean you know the only the, besides roundup the only other control for poison ivy is is uh steroids for for when you get when you get the uh the itch uh-huh and that's so, that's it's too late at that point that's not that's not yeah. what you want all right yeah, Felder, let's we, stay on the phones we got sandra up next in waynesboro Hey, Sandra. Good morning. What's going on in Wayne County? Well, good morning. I'm enjoying a beautiful day today. Um, I have a quick question, please. I'm tired of weed eating down the edge of my asphalted driveway, Uh and I want to know if I can plant what ornamental grass that I could put or something that's low maintenance that will take full sun. I was told that most ornamental grasses won't take full sun during our summer heat that we have here. Well, that's weird so because my my way of thinking is the ornamental grass to do best in full sun, and I wrote the book. Okay, and, uh, and I grow ornamental grass. But let me ask you this: most ornamental grasses, you know, there's a lot of different kinds, but uh, yeah. some of them only get a foot and a half or, or two feet tall. But most of them you're going to get are going to get at least three or four feet tall. And is that too big for your driveway? 
Yes. Um, I'm saying ornamental grass. Uh, Lariope, or however you say that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, short... monkey, monkey, yeah monkey, monkey grass. Monkey grass, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need the, something the, short that's, that's nice, that's pretty, and, and yeah. just short, not tall. Well, a couple of things. It, it, uh, the, the, the monkey grass, and some people say liriope or liriope or liriope, but right. striped, striped monkey grass will take the sun. The little the stuff they call mondo grass, little dwarf monkey grass, it won't take the sun. But the striped stuff will work. But, but also try this. Because it takes a little while to get established, maybe you could get some and break it up into smaller pieces and then plant a few clumps of it and then some round, smooth river rock type things and then some more, in other words, alternate it with a non-grass material and uh and then as the monkey grass gets established every year you can cut each clump in half and spread it that way okay but but the short the striped one not the not the solid green but the ones that are striped those that's those right are full sun. that's right there's even one that's called silvery sunproof <laughs> so i mean you know it's it 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 it, it this is the plant that does best in light. It actually grows best in full sun. What it doesn't like is irradiated heat off of that, uh, off of your your pavement. So if you were to use some kind of bark mulch to keep the ground around it cool, that'll also help keep the weeds down. And it'll just keep the plant cooler. So when you plant it, be sure you mulch it pretty well. Okay. And and what was the name of the one that you said uh, sun? Well, well you, you I, I'm just, I don't know if you can get. You know, I don't know. It ain't no place in Waynesboro we can be able to buy this stuff. So you're gonna have to. Oh no, you know. I know. But uh, if you go with just the plain old striped monkey grass, I grow it in full sun in my garden. And there's a few other plants, but that's a good one to start with. And then we can start adding other stuff as you get around to it. Sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You just solved good. a great big problem. <laughs> good luck on it. Appreciate Thank your you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate your program. Thank you for being part of it. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a break, folks. Just a little short thing, and um, we got some callers on the line. But before we get to the callers, uh, Bill in Neshoba County, if hang on there. I want to talk with a friend of mine who is so lonesome right now. He's just lonely as he can be, and we want to see if we can cheer him up or see if he can cheer us up. So we're going to take a re- real quick break. Me and Jay White and other folks at Mississippi Public Broadcasting, I'm Horticulture's Felder Rushing, and you've tuned in to the Gestalt Gardener. It's all about growing stuff in the in the Magnolia State. Take a real quick break. Come back with a, a little short talk with my friend Herbie, and then we're going to take your phone calls because that's what we do. Stick with us, folks. We'll be right back. If you're a sustaining member of MPB Think Radio, we appreciate your support of our programs. To become a sustainer, go to mpbonline.org. Okie dokie folks, welcome back Horticulture's Fell to Rushing This is the Gestalt Gardener Program And before we take some more phone calls I want to chat with somebody I think we have Herbie Austin on the line Are you there Herbie? I'm here man All righty, man, I just said you're one of the loneliest people in the state right now Is that true? <laughs> yeah, we are pretty lonely in this kind of In the lawn and garden business this time of the year you know, you're 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 the uh, general manager at Hutto's uh, Lawn and Garden Center there in Jackson. But but you know, we've known each other for forty years, maybe something uh, like that. At least, at least forty years at long. Yep. And uh, and you you kind of represent all the garden folks, the independent, locally owned garden centers around the state. And uh, back in the spring, you were ripping and roaring. You could not keep plants on the shelf. What's it like right now? <laughs> well, it's kind of dead right now. <laughs> I mean, we we just don't have, because we don't have a whole lot to sell right now, but also it's just so hot and dry right now that people are not interested in planting. They're more interested in getting from the car to the house, getting an air conditioner. Yeah, that's that's right. And, uh, you know, even if you could dig a hole right now, you're not going to dig a very good one. 
but but you know at the at the same time I want to run it by you. It's not. It's it's really at the very end, but not too late to plant summer stuff like marigolds and tomatoes and stuff if you can find them. Can you still grow things like zinnias from seed, or is it too late for that? It's really a little late on zinnias from seed. Now, as far as planting tomatoes, we're still fine on that. I mean, we're still selling a few tomatoes, and we're trying to keep some going for everybody. Um, but things like things like marigolds, if you can buy a little transplant, summertime stuff, we got we got three or four months of enjoying those. Right, you still got you still get color out of them. Now we're also in the process right now of planting and getting ready for the, our fall season, so we're fun, yeah. planting our cold crops right now. Cold so crops ready by the end of the month of by the end of August, and we'll also have snapdragons and calendulas and the pansies will start coming in too. That's yeah, it's, it's too early for those. So I've been getting emails. Yeah, it's a little early, but we have to get them started. We'll be ready about the end of August for all that to get cranked well, up. When you say cold crops, you're talking about broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower and collards Brussels and kale and, and all and that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. So so right now, well, what should people be doing besides keeping the hummingbird feeders? For, you know, it, it, it it's not too. It's really the time to start thinking about fertilizing the the, the lawn for the fall. Late August, September is when you fertilize the lawn. Yeah, we, in fact, our, we'll have our winterizer in here in about another week. I'm yeah, wondering if so, they're getting time to start thinking about winterizing. Yeah, a lot of people. Wa- um, a lot of a lot of people wait till winter to winterize, and they wait till fall to plant for fall garden. But no, you do it ahead of time for those. Yeah, you got to get it in ahead of time so it'll be growing and be ready to produce for you. So, so what's, what's moving in garden centers right now? Hoses, pots, potting soil? Well, we're burning? selling more water hoses and sprinklers now. Uh, we're still selling a little bit of fertilizer, specialty fertilizers, because you can still the flowers you have and grow in all your gardens. Still need to yeah. be fertilizing them a little longer to keep them going and watering. Well, okay. this is, this, you know, I worked in garden centers for a long time, even before I went to college. But this is the kind of year when you just sort of want to sit in the air conditioner, too. Well, kind of, yes, sure do. <laughs> Mul- we're also having Mul- a lot of trouble. We're having a lot of trouble with the army worms right now. So that's oh that's yeah, big stuff, yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, army worms. By the time people see army worms, they're like an inch or two long. It's almost they've almost finished their damage, but they can still pretty they can, they can wreck a lawn. So what, sure what, what 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 people using sprays or granules for those? Mostly, we're throwing. You want to try to spray them. A spray will kill them quicker. On that. Yeah. And we're using something that has like a bifedrin type chemical in it. Yeah. I almost hate to see people spray these things, though, because, uh, you know, birds that come along and eat those things, they like the birds and wasps and spiders like those worms, but there's a lot of them right now. Right. And they, I had one of my customers about two weeks ago tell me it's the first time he ever stood still and watched his ground move. <laughs> it looked like his yard was moving back and forth. Ooh. And he hadn't been drinking or anything. No, he hadn't been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, I just want to call and say cheer up. It's going to get cool. The days are going to get shorter, and you're going to be busy again. I just want to let folks know that y'all have – this is the time of year to come in and chat with you because you you got enough time to chat with folks when in the spring and the fall you don't. Right. Like I said, come in and visit with us. We're, you know, we're here, so just come in and just talk to us. <laughs> Please come. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Herbie. Tell everybody right. I said hey. All right, fellas. Thank See you, man. Oh, appreciate it. Poor garden center folks. I feel for them. This is the time of year just to hunker down, but it's rapidly coming to, back to time to plant stuff again. Hey, let's see now if we can uh, slide over into Neshoba County and talk with Bill. Bill, you still with us? I am. I am. Thank you for holding, man. What's going on? Well, uh, I got uh, two questions. The first one is about blueberries. Uh huh. I got a. Uh, I got six plants. Uh, they're doing well. Uh, every once in a while, one of the branches kind of bends down, and I was wondering if I could just take that branch and put it on the ground and uh, layer it. Will will they set roots if you do that? You know, it's real interesting because I've never heard anybody do it. There's no reason why they shouldn't because it is. They're not. They're not the easiest plant to root from cuttings. But they do right. root from cutting, so that tells me that maybe if you scratch the bark a little bit, the part you put in the ground, see if that doesn't, you know, what's happening is food flowing from the leaves back towards the roots. If you scratch the bark, that food will stop right there, and they'll start forming roots. So, you know, maybe just sort of rough up the, a little bit of the bark of the part you put in the ground and try that. Do you, do you have little sucker plants coming up around the blueberries yet, or are they too young for that? 
Uh, well, they're four years old, and there's one that's got a, a few things that I think are suckers. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure that's so small, but the others don't. Yeah. So. Well, it's 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 a little bit late for pruning blueberries, um, but those those plants that are coming up around the base are real small ones. Uh, if you snip the tips off of those, the rest of this year they'll branch out. You'll have, instead of shooting straight up uh, tall. They'll start making bushes close to the ground. So go out there if you want to try to lay on those. If there's some some small plants coming up around the base, just snip the tips off of those and uh, let them bush back out. Let's see what happens with those. But anyway, I'd like to find out if the, you know they should layer fine. They should. Okay, I'll give it a try. Now the let other me know thing. How, is, yeah, let me know yeah. how it works. Oh yeah, sure, I will. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I planted uh, four years ago. Uh, three uh, hazelnut trees, and uh, I've pretty much decided that they are to feed the squirrels because they, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting to them, but one of them just died. I just, it's all oh. brown, and uh, did, is, that, ha- is that a disease? or? But did it happen like suddenly, like over just a few days? Uh, well, I just, I just noticed it a couple of weeks ago. It just went yeah. completely brown. Well, hazelnuts or filberts and uh, and maples and all and uh, a lot of these kind of trees, they're really subject to getting root disease. There's a real common disease called verticillium, and and it and it affects roots of plants. Certain plants are more susceptible, but when you have a lot of really wet weather and the roots stay wet, wet and dry back and forth, it makes the roots more susceptible to root diseases. Uh, usually, the, when this happens, the trees just Suddenly, just over a period of just a week or two, just turn brown and the leaves stick on it. So the uh-huh. leaves are turn. If the leaves are are turning brown and sticking on, that's a sign that they might not make it. If they're shedding, if they're falling off, then it might just be temporary stress and the trees can sprout back out. But anyway, yeah. there's not any real treatment for no matter what it is. Once they start doing this, it's going to be a trunk or a root problem most likely, and there's not any real treatment for that. So that's a real frustrating part on my end. So is it going to spread to the other trees? Well, it's it's, it's not like it's, it's like cold germs. You know, they're out there mm-hmm. all the time, and not everybody has yes. a cold. So a lot right. of times, when when a plant just comes to those, it's because it has some kind of injury, either physical injury or or, or too much rain or extreme drought or you know clay soil, something like that that weakens mm-hmm. it. Usually, a healthy plant can 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 outgrow the damage. Uh, now, okay. these, now these these are real general comments I'm making though, but that's the best yeah. I can do. Okay, one more quick thing. How do you know when it's time to pick a pawpaw? <laughs> that's a good question. And here's a hint: don't put them in your pocket because they get real squishy. They're sort of <laughs> like uh, they're, they're sort of like bananas. You know, when they're really yeah. when they're green, they're really firm. But when they start to mature, they'll get soft. You know, so okay. uh, you know, uh, and there's there's just enough variety out there to where you know, there may be uh, three weeks or so between when one is ripe and one is not. So this thing I can do is just gently squeeze them and start feeling soft, uh, you know, really good and soft. Go ahead and just take a bite out of one and see what you think. It should taste like custard. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. These are my first ones, and they're hard as the golf balls right now. But Yeah. Uh, so I'll look for them to soften up. Yeah. All righty, man. Appreciate you calling. Good luck, good luck on your filbert tree. Okay. Love your show. Bye bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty. I guess we probably need to think about catching our second wind, getting another cup of coffee or something like that. So Jay, uh you got the you got the little cheesy two lined up for us, man? I do. I have it set and ready to go. Okay, it's a little short one and I just I just felt, you know, just real all moony and stuff because I'm gonna be coming home in a couple of weeks and so I thought I'd just play a little short thing, minute, minute and a half or so while we catch a second wind. It is a live program. This is one of many weekly, daily programs that Mississippi Public Broadcasting put on it. We got so many topics, but this is the the one I enjoy. It's about gardening. We're going to take a little bit of a break and come back with your phone calls. If you got some questions or comments, you want to dispute some of the stuff I say or add to it, I'm okay. My ego is intact. I'm perfectly happy with being proven wrong or being called into question. Perfectly okay with that. So anyway, we're going to take a quick break and come back to Mississippi Public Broadcasting, the Gestalt Gardener, right here on MPB uh, in just a couple of minutes. Stick with us, folks. We'll be right back.
Thank you for being. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing. And uh, before we jump with the calls, I want to I wanna do a little trivia here for Jay White. Jay, I don't know if you remember a, uh, a group called Eric Burton and War. It's an old group. They had a song called Spill the Wine. Do I Spill the Wine? You remember that too, by any chance, or does it predate you? I, th- I I don't remember that one, and I'm kind of <laughs> like a like an old school music junkie. Well, go- Google it, spill the wine. But anyway, the reason I mentioned that because I was listening to it the other day, and it's got a line that describes me. Uh-oh. It says, "and and there I was, an overfed, long haired, leaping gnome." <laughs> <laughs> I know this. Like I didn't know the 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 song that you played today. I didn't know there were other words to it. You know, I'm just used to the part that played before the TV show all the time. Oh yeah, the Golden Girls, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, now Google spilled the wine. An overfed, long haired, leaping gnome. That would be me. And by the way, I won't mention that August the 13th celebrates 12 percent of the population that has a harder time handling stuff. Today is International Left Handers Day. The chance for people, <laughs> chance for people to feel good about being left-handed or acknowledging the special left-handed people in your life. Oh, they're just eccentric. That's all. <laughs> that's right. I've, I'm told up. left-handers are more creative. Uh, matter of fact, uh, that's one of the things it is. But anyway, twelve percent of people, and this is their day. Congratulations, left-handers, and sorry <laughs> about all the stuff you have to put up with. Right. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the phone call. Let's start up way up in Corinth. What's going on, Mike? How you doing, man? Doing great. I'm holding my phone in my left hand. <laughs> Are you a lefty? I uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I want. I, I, it, wait, I need to apologize. I hope lefty isn't a slur. You know, these days you got to watch out what you say. <laughs> I had a question on? about um, trying to propagate some uh, chase trees, uh-huh. latex trees, I, yeah. and I. Propagated some uh, about two or three years ago, but I, I guess I've forgotten. Uh, should I be doing that in partial sun, or full sun, or? Yeah, well, in it, and you're going from cuttings, right? Because they they do right. grow from seed, but uh, but cuttings right. are pretty easy. In general, when you make a cutting off a plant, it's, it's it'll grow leaves more quickly than it'll grow roots. And if the if it gets too much sun, it sucks the water and it needs it needs energy from the sun. But too much sun, it'll dry them out because there's no roots there. So my rule of thumb is in really really bright indirect light. In other words, just outside the sun, you know, where it's, where it's wow. bright so it gets some energy. You know, maybe filter light under a tree or something. And it also helps to make a little tent out of plastic to uh, sort of make it like a little miniature greenhouse to keep the humidity high. But bright, indirect light and humidity are going to help about more than anything. When When is the uh, latest uh, we have to get those in the ground once they sprout roots? You know, I, I, don't, know what the, I don't know what the latest is, but we the, the plant's going to need it at least a month. You know, before they even, you know, when you make a cutting, the cells that were in the stem cells have got to completely change. It's it's called cellular differentiation. They got to change from being uh, uh, twig cells to root cells, and that takes a few weeks. And so, uh, you know, we're only a couple of months or so away from from fall when things can start slowing down. So, in general, uh, early, uh, late spring, early midsummer would be better, but. It may not be too late now. I just don't know. I don't know how quick that they root. I'm actually doing it for my sister. She lives at Mathiston. Uh-huh. She lives out west to start. Well, so she's yeah. further south than me. Yeah. Well, but, some uh, plants, some plants like gardenias. I mean, and rosemary, they'll root within three weeks. But uh, crepe myrtles and roses, and probably the vitex, the uh, um, the uh, lilac chase tree. The, May take a little bit longer. So if you if you're gonna do it, I go ahead and get right on it. Should I? Uh, I've actually been uh, I've had them in pots for several weeks now, and one or two of them are starting to sprout leaves. Uh, should I put any slow release fertilizer in the pot, or just leave it like it is? 
Oh, rather than, well, if you're going to go with a slow release fertilizer, let's use a very small amount. And to me, it'd be better to use a really, uh, really dilute liquid plant food, you know, what half strength the liquid plant, because that's more quickly absorbed by what little roots are there. And uh, so, you know, it, to, to me, it's better to use half strength liquid stuff uh, on plants that are just starting to grow roots. I have some that are in pots, and I've also got some in water. Uh, would you put liquid fertilizer in the in the plants or in water? No, no. As a matter of fact, they can't use fertilizer at all until they start growing roots. So uh, I, I no, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. You know, they've got enough stored energy in there, you know, in their stems, store carbohydrates to to make their own roots. But until they start growing roots, I wouldn't fertilize them. I see. Okay. Well, you've answered all my questions. Well, it's sort of halfway, but um, I'm curious. I'm going to be looking it up myself. So good luck on it, man. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All righty. Okie doke. So uh, we got the lines open right now. Folks, you want to give us a call? Uh, we had a call online. She dropped out. But if you want to give us a call, it's toll free one eight seven seven mpb ring um, Would like to um, mention that I got my invitation from the Royal Horticulture Society. Uh, to meet with some of its staff. There's a brand new RHS Botanic Garden. You know, they've got uh, five already from a lot of people heard of the Royal Botanic Garden at Kew, and they, they've got several scattered around the uh, uh, Great Britain. But they've got a brand new one named Bridgewater. It was supposed to open last year, but because of COVID, they didn't. So it's got a, an extra year. Uh, it's an old estate. It's one of the largest new botanic gardens in Europe. Uh, and I'm going next week, probably Thursday right now, for a full day to make sure the light is just right for taking ph ph uh, photography and also to meet with some of the staff, their horticulturists, and, and see what they got planned. But uh, the Royal Horticulture Society, RHS Botanic Garden named Bridgewater, just opened up, and I just got my invitation to meet with some of their staff next week. So we'll be talking about that and also uh, showing some pictures of it. But uh, meanwhile, if you've got uh, a chance to just ride around your hometown, Mississippi is a botanic garden. It's just all scattered around, and things don't have labels on them. There's a lot of really cool plants blooming right now, particularly the what I call althea. A lot of people call it Rose of Sharon. This is a great old-fashioned plant. It's been growing for centuries uh, here in the United States, and it's a, uh, uh, it's a true hibiscus. They're small shrubs to large shrubs, not quite small trees. And it's a terrific plant for summertime color. Great big hibiscus. I'm also seeing a lot of pictures on the Mississippi um, the Mississippi Gardening Facebook page, which you're welcome to check out. Just go to Mississippi Gardening on Facebook and uh, look at some of the pictures of the things people are posting for the butterflies in the garden. Not just the great big swallowtail butterflies and tiger swallowtails, but also those night feeding moths. The moths that come out, they're called hummingbird moths. Some people call them hawk moths. And if you'd like to see some pictures of some of these, people from Mississippi, gardens from Mississippi, sent me in some, and I just posted a picture of several of these incredible hummingbird, night-flying hummingbird moths, and one that flies in the daytime. It looked like a cross between a hummingbird and a bumblebee. If you'd like to see some pictures of these, uh, go to my, my blog. It's not a, not a website. It's spelled a rushing dot blog. And uh, I think the first, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, the, the latest blog I've done, I did one on what makes dirt smell like dirt, what makes rain, how can you smell dirt before rain. Uh, but anyway, go to feldorushing.blog and look at some of the pictures uh, of the, the, the big hawk moths, the hummingbird moths that people in Mississippi have sent me pictures of. Meanwhile, let's slide up to South Haven, just south of the Tennessee line, and talk with Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Builder, how are you this morning? So far, so good. My coffee's kicking in. I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. I've got a question for you. Somebody is awfully impatient for a gardener because I've really been enjoying uh, going outside and just picking cherry tomatoes and eating them outside, doing that kind of stuff. And uh, these other plants that I can do that with is uh, sugar snap peas. And I was going to ask you, when can I plant the sugar snap peas? That's, that's a good question. Sugar snap peas, uh, you know, they, they grow all summer in England, but, but they won't take the heat and humidity. So the two times to plant those, one would be uh, in the late winter, 
uh, late February or March, and you can harvest them well up into June before it gets too hot. And then you can also start some, I'm going to say in the next couple, three weeks, you can start some, uh, and, you know, they'll grow okay in the heat as long as you don't overwater them and steam them to death. And then they'll start producing as, it get, as the days get short and nights get, get uh, 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 cooler in the uh, Oh, late September, October, in November. See, so if you can keep the plant, little plants alive over the next few weeks with mulch to keep the ground cool and moist, and they could come right on up and start producing when it gets cooler in the fall. So I'd say late August uh, would be a good time to plant some, and late February or March would be a, a good time to plant them. So Labor Day, somehow I remember things around holidays. Yeah, yeah, that that would work. Now, now keep in mind. I, now, I planted three different kinds this past spring, and I made a mistake because some of the, the sugar snap, the one that got the name sugar in them, like sugar snap, sugar baby, sugar daddy, they're really, really sweet. But I planted some regular English peas, and to be honest with you, they taste a little bit on the mealy side. They're better for cooking. So stick with the ones that have the name sugar in them if you want to okay. eat them fresh off the plant. That's what I want to do. I can All right. throw them in salads, but, you know, I just like – immediate reward. You go out there, pick the tea, and eat it right now. There, there you go. There you go. Well, I'd wait another couple of weeks, and as soon as they come up, you know, go ahead and mulch them to keep the ground cool. Okay. Well, i got tons of free pine needles that just, um, they're, they're out there. So I don't okay. Sure I and, them up, but the pine needles are just there. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck. Uh, one thing I like to mention, though, is uh, pine needles also harbor crickets, and crickets like the little plants, so just be careful about that. Maybe put a little collar, uh, half of a toilet paper tube of a collar around each plant. Probably what happened to my spring one. Yeah. Well, good luck on it, Rebecca. Appreciate your call. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes, uh, I don't know, uh, she might have been calling from her car or something. I couldn't tell, Jay. So what's Jay? What's been going on with Fix It? Isn't there isn't there some kind of car? Uh, not Fix It. Uh, uh, well, you don't do the auto thing, do you? I Who do. Does a, I am there for it. Like I answer the okay. phone for that one. Okay. Isn't there, isn't there a, a like a car show coming up, and she's going to be at it? Did I read something about that on our website? There was a car show a couple of weekends ago at Trustmark oh. Park in Pearl. Okay, I missed that one. Yeah, and uh, um, Liz. Uh, uh, Gil, the producer and, and host of the show, represented MPB out there in the scorching sun. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. At the baseball park with lots of cars. <laughs> yeah. You know, some, somebody said I ought to take my truck there. But, you know, my truck is not a show truck. My truck is a clown truck. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. But anyway, somebody somebody hit uh, just above my tail light. They they banged into it and it dented. It knocked over my, my John Deere green paint off. And a lot of people got really mad about it. I'm thinking, no. It, first of all, my tail light still works. But second of all, I'm not scared to drive it fast anymore. There you go. That's just more character. You know, That's more character. Yeah, yeah. But you know, when it's all clean and shiny and new paint job and no dents and all, you I was driving like a little old man. <laughs> so any now 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 I just gun it I just gun it so anyway I'll be glad to get back to that that garden well the green makes I, it look like it's going slow it's it's the opposite of red right like the red makes yeah. it you know that your insurance is higher and it makes it makes it look like it's going faster than it is the green is the opposite effect of that right well well luckily for me my trucks are old that they won't give me anything <laughs> they, they won't give me anything except liability they won't give me collision insurance on my truck because it said it's not worth anything <laughs> <laughs> but can you get an insurance policy on your garden though Oh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. Don't know. But anyway, it's all fine. It's all good. We're going to take a little bit of a break, folks. We've got some lines wide open. If you want to give me a call, it's toll free, one eight seven seven mpb ring I can't translate that into numbers, but look at your phone. It says MPB and ring. And uh, when we come back, we're going to go down to Natchez and talk with the fella. But meanwhile, I hope your garden's going good. I hope you're not watering too much. A good deep soaking every few days is better than light watering every day. And if you got to water, try to water early in the morning or early enough in the evening so the plants have time to dry before dark. Because we've seen a lot of leaf spot diseases with too much water and all this humidity. So water late in the afternoon, not at night, or try to water in the morning, not in the middle of the day. We're going to take a real quick break and come back with more of the Gestalt Garden here on MPB right after this. Okay. 
Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Port of Culture is fell to rushing. And before we get into some of my, more of my weirdness here, let's, uh, let's, let's go down to Natchez and talk with Richard. How are you, sir, Richard? Fine. Uh, Elder, thank you for taking my call. Sure. My, yard has been, my yard has been invaded with what looks like a miniature mimosa tree. And underneath oh, them are just unbelievable seeds. I pull some and I pull one and like you kill one and ten come back. Yep. What's the remedy for that? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing it all over the, the county. Yeah. Well, for, for, first of all, it's been around a long time. Uh, when people see it for the first time, they're just horrified. And it goes by several names. The most common name is called mimosa weed, it, it, just because it looks like a little mimosa tree. It's also called chamber bitter. If you want to Google it, chamber bitter. And, uh, you know, that's sort of the – anyway, here's a problem. This is the plant that is mostly an annual in northern Mississippi, but it can be a perennial. If you look at the bottom of the leaves, is the tiniest little white flower you've ever seen, and little balls. And each of those balls have got dozens of tiny, tiny seeds. And you can pull it and pull it and pull it. It's going to keep coming back from seeds like forever. So that's the bad news. It's hard to get rid of because even if you pull them all, you're going to have more coming back from seeds. Uh, the second thing is what will kill it will kill most other plants. See, so there's all sorts of stuff you can spray on it, but if it's with other plants, you got to kiss them goodbye. So it's a really, really tough one. There are some herbicides that will kill it. If you've got Bermuda grass, you can use anything for broadleaf weeds in a Bermuda grass, but that will kill flowers in St. Augustine. So it's a tough one, man. When I see it in my little garden and it comes from, I don't know where it comes from, uh, sometimes from plants I bring in, when I first see it, I immediately pull it up without dislodging the seeds, and I throw it away. Because once it gets started, it's a real t- It's voted by people on the Mississippi Gardening Facebook page as the worst weed in Mississippi because it's so hard to get rid of. I hate to sound this way, but it's the truth, man. Look, if I just keep growing it, will it uh, at some point take over the yard? Oh, it'll, it'll spread like crazy because it grows in the sun or the shade, you know. So, will, will, uh, it, will it can it still grow along with the St. Augustine or the centipede? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you you know if if you'll raise your mower, if you'll mower St. Augustine centipede on the high side, then it's real strong. It has better root systems. It, it replaces it more quickly. If you cut St. Augustine centipede close, it thins out and the weeds going to uh, predominate. So it, the, the 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 if you can mow high and fertilize lightly in the spring, then the uh, St. Augustine centipede will outcompete almost anything. And this stuff, every time you mow it, will just knock it out. Okay. But that's, that's, a, that's, that's the long-term solution. Just raise your mower and, ho- and just ignore this stuff. And, and feed the, the centipede and our St. Augustine, uh, and that will overcrowd it, you say? No, it won't, you know this. This is a this is a very tenacious weed. It grows in, but but you won't notice as, as much if you got a thick lawn. I see. Okay, the, as long as I don't notice won't, as much. That's right. As long as you don't cut too close. Let your grass get on the high side before you cut it on the high side, and uh, and you won't notice this weed or any other weed that for that matter. That's your best solution. And and fertilize in the spring and or fall or what? Uh, no earlier than April, no later than around the first or middle of September. If you haven't fertilized this year, sometime over the next couple of three weeks, I'd, I'd give it a, a fall feeding, but n- not after middle of September, not before the first of April. That's the rule of thumb. Thank you so much, Elder. Good luck, on It's not going to be fun, but you know, take your glasses off, mow high, it'll disappear. <laughs> okay, Good luck. Bye-bye. All righty. Now let's slide up to Rankin County, just uh, outside the Jackson area. How are you, Kathy? Good morning. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Felder. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. A real quick question. I have a uh, climbing rose. It has dead, ugly black canes in it. Can I trim it now? Oh, yes. Uh, rule of thumb is any time on any plant you've got dead or diseased or dying stuff, you can cut those out any time of the year, any time of the year. You don't want to do any hard pruning after towards the end of this month because the new growth doesn't have time to come out and mature. So uh, what a lot of rosarians do, and I'm talking about even in botanic gardens, is uh, on climbing roses, they just routinely cut out dead or dying stuff as they see it. And then every year or so, they'll cut out some of the, the clutter, you know, uh, cut some of the long stems back, let them start sprouting back out with healthy new growth. So 
Cut out the dead stuff, the bad-looking stuff. And then if you've got several healthy canes, uh, cut at least one of them back a pretty good bit, and it'll send out new canes that'll be more vigorous to replace those you're cutting off. Great, great. Okay, thank you so much. I love okay. your program. I appreciate it. If you're going outside right now, wear you a hat. Oh, I will. Well, I won't be outside now. It's too late. <laughs> there you go. All right. All well, right. good luck, y'all. Thank you. All righty. Let's see if we can squeeze in a call from Pearl River, Louisiana. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Hey, Ralda, how are you doing? Good. We're starting to run out of time, but what can I help you with? Okay, I got um, two Magnolia Janes that have a lot of brown leaves um, on um, them. They have a lot of buds, and I have um, crepe myrtle with a lot of black soot. Okay, uh, two 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 real quick things. The, the magnolia, they're always going to have older leaves that are that are spotted and dead and dying. As long as the new growth looks okay, I would not worry about them at all. We've just had a lot of problems uh, with all the rain and humidity, a lot of leaf spot. As long as the new growth looks okay, that's fine. As far as the crepe myrtles, look on the twigs, and if you see this crusty little white, crusty stuff on it, that's going to be a new insect called crepe myrtle bark scale, and it's a tough one. But if the twigs are nice and clean. So on that magnolia jane, too. No, 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 that. no, no, no. That, that, the the crepe myrtle bark scale will only be on the crepe myrtles. But this okay. black sooty stuff is what grows on the drippings from sucking type insects. Uh, oh. So if you don't see, if you don't see this crusty looking white black stuff on the twigs of crepe myrtles, you just have aphid problems. And uh, for the most part, okay. if you'll just just uh, wet your trees down with some dishwater detergent, let it dry for a few minutes, rinse it off, that stuff will flake right off. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because they look very bad. <laughs> well, it could still be crepe myrtle bark scale. Go to my blog, felderrushing.blog, and the, uh, one of the, of the top, it'll have something about, about crepe myrtles, and click okay. on that, and you'll see what the crepe myrtle bark scale looks like. Okay, and so okay. the magnolia, ro uh, magnolia janes, just leave them like they are. If it's just the older leaves looking bad, don't worry about it at all. That's just the weather. Okay. All right, you okay. love your show. Appreciate it. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. I guess it's about time for us to get out of here, ain't it, Jay White? Yes, sir. All righty. Well, the music going to be kicking pretty soon. By the way, I learned a new word, pataphysical. Not metaphysical, but pataphysical. It's the unofficial science of imagination, of imaginary solutions. In other words... I got all those. It's the science of exceptions. No matter what I say, Aunt Mamie knows different. <laughs> so she's a, she's a pataphysical person in the family. And that's true of gardening. No expert is going to say anything that somebody's not going to come back and refute with their own experience. I'm used to that. That's okay. I can learn, and I'll do better if I have to, I guess. Meanwhile, folks, me and Jay White, other folks at MPB, hey, we're hoping that Java's boy gets better soon. And right now he's down and out with a, with a little illness. Hope everything looks good. And we'll be back same time, same place next week. But if you get a chance, take a kid to a garden center or take a kid to a farmer's